Hi, welcome to Tommy's Piano Corner. I'm Tommy. This is a place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves a piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. When you try to record yourself playing piano, have you ever noticed that it's really, really difficult to actually get it right end to end? Even when you've played that piece many times in your practice sessions and it's come out all right. Well, in today's video, I'm going to share with you some ideas of how we can get around this problem. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. When we're alone and practicing away, we can quite often get a piece to a very good place where we can play it through quite often without any obvious bloopers and with it sounding musically actually quite good to us. However, as soon as there's a person in the room, the chances of getting that perfect performance start to fall. This is even more true when it's a person that we know is going to critique what we're playing, such as an examiner, for example, or maybe a paying audience member. But any person at all just puts this pressure on and makes it less and less likely that we'll get that perfect performance. This is known as performance anxiety. Even the greatest pianists suffer from it to one extent or another. When you put a microphone in the room, it has the same effect. We know very well that that microphone is going to capture every tiny nuance of everything we play and expose it to every person that listens to it when we play it back. So this puts us under even more pressure to try and get it right. But when you're recording, you don't really need to put yourself under that kind of pressure as there are options to deal with it. Do you seriously think in any professional recording studio things are actually done in a single take? If this were the case, they would likely be cranking records out really, really quickly because the end-to-end -end process wouldn't take so long. Even for classical music, this is also true. I remember watching a documentary on YouTube about the great Arthur Rubinstein, and he unashamedly re-recorded sections of pieces with which he wasn't that happy. I saw a similar film about Horowitz where he did the same. There are, of course, exceptions to this rule. Richter was famously not very comfortable with the recording process at all. Hence, most of the videos and recordings of him that you'll see are actually recorded live at his concerts. I also read once that Martha Argerich, when she was awarded a recording contract, went into the studio and said to them, I will play through everything three times. You then choose whichever version you prefer. Aside then these great exceptions to the rule, it's true to say that very, very little ever comes to our ears that was recorded in a single take. So why should we put ourselves under a lot of pressure to be able to do this? In the days when recordings were stored on old-fashioned tape, being able to cut and splice this tape to get rid of the bits that we didn't really want actually required a lot of skill. However, in the modern world, being able to do this on our computer is now something that is remarkably easy to accomplish. We've talked about digital audio workstations before. In case you missed those videos, I've linked one just here for you so you can go and have a look. But basically, your digital audio workstation has all the functionality you need to be able to do this cutting and splicing right on your computer in a manner that's even really easy to control. In order to be able to do this, we need to change our mindset ever so slightly. And that is to say, we need to now think about starting to record in order to be able to edit it later. One of the main challenges with the piano is the way the instrument works, and predominantly that's the pedal. As you hold sound within the pedal, it means that that sound, of course, carries through to the next part of the music. So you can't just go back and restart at any random location that you want. Instead, what we're going to do is, before we even start recording, we're going to define a number of what I've called restore points. 
So these are points that if we make a mistake, we'll be able to go back to that point and then start again from there in order to try that section again. Taking the example of the C-sharp minor waltz, when I recorded this recently for my Facebook page, I decided to have restore points just here in the score. Once we've defined all of our restore points, all that's then left to do is record. So to do this, we start at the beginning and we keep playing until we make a mistake or until we have a part of the piece that we're not very happy with. What we then do is rather than starting from the beginning, we go back to the closest restore point and we restart from there. To make this work properly, first remember when you stop playing to completely lift the pedal and let the room go silent just for a second or two. The next thing to do is when we restart, don't restart exactly from the restore point, restart from one or two pedal changes just before it. It's important to do this so that you're able to combine the two pieces properly together later on. So if your restore point was just here, what you'd actually do is restart from just here. Be patient. Keep playing through and do this as many times as is necessary until you get to the end of the piece. Always try to think that the part you're going to retain is going to be the last time you played a given section. This makes it easier when you're editing. I would strongly advise you not to think about creating several different takes and then later trying to splice these together. That's how I first tried doing this and to be honest it didn't work so well because you got sort of continuity type problems with the interpretation. Once we've finished recording, we now simply need to move into the editing process. So as always, we'll use GarageBand to do this given I'm a Mac user. First, create a new project. Add your first track. So pick this microphone icon one and now import your audio file. If we did well during the recording, then the simplest thing to do now is start from the end and work backwards to the beginning. We identify each of the segments that we intend to use in our final version and cut the audio file accordingly. You can then simply delete all of the outtakes to keep your workspace cleaner. All we need to do now is join these fragments together again. The way I then go about piecing all of these back together is to lay them out on two separate tracks within GarageBand. Create a new track with duplicate settings. This is very important as you want each track to be identical. Next, position the fragments, these are called regions in GarageBand, along the tracks with each subsequent region being on a different track. It'll then look something like this, with each region slightly overlapping from the previous one as we've made splits just before and just after the restore point. Use the overlapping part of them to get properly aligned so that the next region starts just at the right point. Now we're going to use the editor to merge them together. To do this, we're going to use what is called volume automation on each track. We use this to effectively turn down the volume on one region and up on another so that they blend together when played. We need to very carefully determine the right point at which to do this. Use your eyes, look at the waveform carefully and find a place where it's quieter. Now we click on show automation and a line now appears the length of the track. 
This line represents the volume. By clicking on the line with a mouse, it adds a dot. You then find a different point and click again. Now you have two dots. You're then able to drag either up or down, so up for louder and down for quieter. You can add as many dots as you like in order to manipulate the volume. By doing this carefully, you can make the transition pretty much seamless. Once you have done it for all fragments, simply export the result into a new file by clicking share as we've done before, and you're good. There are of course limitations to this technique. It is important that you're able to play the piece fundamentally well from beginning to end. Yes, technically it's possible to edit out individual wrong notes, but this would take an awful lot of time to do, and unless you're really good at editing, I doubt the result would be very convincing. As an aside, I watched a video from one of my favorite YouTube channels where the basic topic was, one of them wanted to have a version of himself playing La Campanella on the piano, and clearly didn't have the piano level required to be able to do this. So he said to his mate, listen, you just do that editing thing again, you know, like you've done before, the editing thing. So his friend said, okay, play me a chromatic scale from top to bottom. So we recorded the chromatic scale and then basically edited together La Campanella from that scale. Not a particularly convincing version, quite bizarre. In short, don't try to do it this way at home. Make sure you can play the piece well enough before you start this recording process. Once you've finished with the audio file, all you then need to do is to combine the audio and video together. And to do this, we'll follow pretty much the same process in iMovie that we follow just in GarageBand. We'll go through, we'll identify the bits of the video that we no longer want to keep. We'll split, we'll delete them. And then we'll spend a little bit of time combining everything together and syncing it up as we've done before. If you remember, I showed you how to do this synchronization stuff in that video about adding reverb to your audio recordings. So I've linked that here for you. Now over to you, give it a try. I hope you've found the ideas in this video to be something that you'd like to try out yourself. It honestly isn't very hard to do. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner and of course to click the little bell icon so that you're notified of new videos as they're released. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.